Hello, I'm Ivan Protasov. Welcome. In this tutorial, I will show you how to do some parametric issues in Rhino without a grasshopper. So the option we are talking about is the record history. And it's a truly parametric option. And what it does, it records the history of your work simply step by step. And if it's on changing some parent objects, we can see how ch how children change themselves too. Uh, like in this example, this shape is the parent for these circles. And if we change it, we can see how circles follow the form. Like this. So according to my example, I'll show you this on the tower. And first of all, please be sure that pre pressing the right mouse button on this record history button, uh, you have these two options ticked, like always record history and update children, and I'll tell you about these two later. Uh, so firstly, we'll need some curves for our tower. And the history starts here. If we make a copy of this curve simply by pressing Alt and moving the gimbal, then we rotate the parent we, or move it and we can see how the child uh, change itself too. But I mean, this is the, the parent and this is a child, but if we change the child somehow, then the history breaks and we can't really control it after. So we have our curves. We simply make loft like this, okay? And already here, this surface is the child of these three curves. And if we change it, we can see how the surface change itself too. Yeah, and uh, to make this more interesting, we could just add the third generation for this. And that we will do using flow and surface command. So for that, we will need an array of circles. Here's our circle array like 15 in x direction uh, 30 in y 1 in z here is our unit space size i'll group it to make it easier to select them and the base surface here's it uh, so now we run the flow and surface command. Here are our circles, enter, base surface, target surface, here we are. And what's interesting here, if we change the very first curve, I mean the curve of the first generation, it will influence all the other generations. And even if we would make a copy of these circles like the last generation it will influence them again but if we would change it manually i mean if we would change the last generation manually we would move it or rotate it somehow it breaks the history and for this to make this not happen we have the really cool button it calls lock children if we tick it we can't change the next generation anyhow it just doesn't allow us to do this yeah so that's that's pretty much it also, uh, the last button is history break warning. 
I mean it's needed when you have this unticked and I mean if you just started to use this command uh, so it could be helpful I mean when you rotate it it uh, here appears the warning that it breaks the history you can press OK and then it really breaks it and you can just press Ctrl Z it will return it. I mean, it, it will return you to to the beginning when it and then it works again. So that's it. Uh, it could be really helpful for finding some right shapes or something like this. But my advice for you is, uh, when you found it, just make a copy of it, and then you can. Uh, like trim it or do whatever you want and it will not influence the whole history the whole system so a moment yeah it breaks the history here here we have our perforated shape but if we don't like it and we want to change it we can change it here as well right and make the copy again that's it subscribe for more interesting stuff and thanks for watching